Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to show you the one huge mistake that you should never make under any circumstances when it comes to exception handling in C Sharp. Now, this problem has been around for a very long time and it is fairly well documented, however, I still see people making it. So in this video we'll explain what the problem is, how it works, why it is a problem and how you can avoid it, as well as some extra stuff around the problem. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and for more training check out my courses on domtrain.com. Alright, let me show you what I have here. I have a simple weather API over here and I've actually changed the bog standard template weather API to actually use a real weather service which calls the open weather map API. So we are actually using this service and this service uses an API key to call the real API and do some stuff. So if I go ahead and I run this API over here and I go to Postman to call it and let's say I want the weather for London, then I can go ahead and say give me the weather and I'm getting the current weather for London. If I go ahead and I say Milan, then I'm going to get the appropriate uh, response. And then we have things like description, clear sky, the temperature feels like and so on. So just a very basic weather API that does some work. Now we're going to try to force an exception, but we're going to try to force sort of a realistic exception. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a host name that doesn't really exist. So I'm going to add an S here. But think of this as something that can be really anything in your application. Maybe the get request fails, maybe the create client fails, anything can actually be affected by this. And what I'm going to do first is just run it and see how the thing will fail. Now, I'm running this in development, meaning that there's actually an exception handling filter that will catch this exception and display it as raw text here. So as you can see, I'm going to get the stack trace as text here. And it's actually a pretty big stack trace. Now that is enough for me to take and debug if I need to. However, I do want to show you something. If you go ahead and you change this from development to production, then .NET will use that environment when I run it again and say that, okay, this will fail, but it will fail without dumping the stack trace on the body of the request because you don't want your consumers to know the internals of your application. So in production, you wouldn't see that stack trace, but if you're running it in another mode, for example, development, you will see it. That's something you should know about ASP.NET Core. Now, since the exception is happening here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a good old try and then catch close, right? So I'm going to get the exception here and I'm going to move this bit into try. And now there's many ways you can actually catch the exception and fall back into a different type of response. For example, if an exception does happen, then maybe do we have something in the cache to serve? We won't deal with that. What I want to do here is I just want to log the exception uh, in a user-friendly way. So I'm going to say logger, which I am injecting in the constructor over here. And then I'm going to say logger.log error, because this is a big error if it happens. And I'm going to pass the exception first and then say failed to retrieve weather for and then I'm going to pass down the city over here. So I'm going to say city and the city I'm getting from the parameter over here. Now I am going to log this in a user friendly way that I might use for further analysis. However, I do also have in this case a global exception filter. So if a fundamental issue happens, I might still want to throw the exception I got here back again. So something else down the pipeline handles it. So what you might do is say, oh, I have an exception object. I can use throw and then I can use the exception object. This is bad. This is the biggest single mistake you can make when you're rethrowing an exception. And to see why, I'm going to actually first let it run. So I'm going to say run this again in development. So we're going to get the stack trace and the exception in the request body here. So I'm just going to send it here and I'm going to select everything and copy it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a blank diff window so I can compare effectively text. So I'm going to paste the one over here and then I'm going to show you the alternative, the right way to do this. And the right way to do this is actually not explicitly mentioning the exception you want to throw. So you just say throw. The compiler in C Sharp is smart enough to know that in this context, when you say throw, you're referring to this exception over here. So if I save now and I do the exact same thing and I get the exact same exception, so I'm going to go ahead and just run it, I'm getting something that looks very similar. However, if I go back to that diff window and I paste it, you will immediately see that in this version over here on the right, the new one, we have a lot more 
information, a lot more context, a lot more of a rich stack trace. Why is that the case? Well, that's the case because when you do throw without specifying an exception, what's happening is you are effectively rethrow the original exception, but you're preserving the whole stack trace up until this point. So if there was something outside of what you're doing in here, that is also kept in that stack trace and thrown, giving you a better experience and more information when it comes to processing what's going on here. If you do throw EX and you throw the exception you have here, you are still throwing the original exception, the one you got here, but you're basically saying, okay, this is my cutoff point, I am resetting the stack trace up until this point, and I'm destroying all the previous information I had up until here. As you can understand, this can be bad, and the deeper the stack trace, the more information you are losing. I should point out, by the way, that I've also seen this one over here. People do throw a new exception, and then they get the message, and they throw, again, a new exception, but with the message from... that's even more convoluted. Basically, never do this. This will create a new exception, and you're gonna lose regional stack trace, and the type of the exception because you're only preserving the message. Remember, the exception class is sort of the god level class, and then everything else extends that. And actually, looking at this, you might be able to understand why the throw ex part is even possible because it's possible in the same way you could do, for example, here exception equals new exception and throw the exception. So there is no context that throw EX is the exception that got here by somewhere else. It is just an exception object and you can throw it as many times as you want and the compiler will just say, yeah, fine, that, that looks good. Nothing special here because I've actually turned off two warnings in this video to even show you what the real problem is. So if I go ahead and say throw EX, my ID writer would normally give me a warning. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this comment which disables all the warnings, and you'll be able to see that exception rethrow possibly intended. This means that you possibly don't want to do this, you want to rethrow the exception you just got in here from. But the good thing about this is that Microsoft also added a warning about this, which I had to suppress in here. I've added a suppress message assembly level attribute that will disable that warning. If I comment it out and I go back here, you will see that the whole line now has a special error code and it says rethrowing code exception changes stack information. So even much of a better name. And if I click on this over here, we get the documentation page over here with the cause and then the rule description, which is great explaining exactly why that happened. There's also refactoring here. So if I go ahead and I say rethrow to preserve stack details, I can just do this and then it all works. This is something that most people know about, but I do still see it quite a lot in different code bases and I hope to never have to say it again. So that's why I'm making this video. More of a basic thing, but I think everyone needs to know about this. But now I want to know from you, what are similar small things like this one that they're very easy to fix, but many people misunderstand? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep coding.